This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Suicide prevention is the topic of today's in-depth news feature. We have that story and more next. Hello everyone and thank you for your time. I'm Ken Kara, and let's get to today's information. The Lehigh Valley Health Network started giving Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine booster shot today to at-risk populations. The FDA and CDC have approved the booster shot for at least six months after the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine for those 65 years and older, those that live in long-term care facilities, those 18 to 64 with underlying medical conditions that increase their risk of getting COVID-19, and those 18 to 64 with frequent institutional or occupational exposure to the virus, like healthcare workers, teachers, and grocery store workers. To schedule a booster shot, go to mylvhn.org or call 833-584-6283. And for more information, go to lvhn.org vaccines. Now it's time for today's news feature. Here's Lisa Sugart. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. Here to talk about this very important topic is our good friend, Ed Payne, who is a clinical social worker. When we say that every 15 minutes, someone in America dies by suicide, uh, it's, it becomes even more overwhelming. Um, and the, you know, the risk factors for it, uh, those in so much pain that their own death seems like a comfort and the only solution uh, is, is very serious. And the, the thing is that there are ways to intervene. It's the second leading cause of death, uh, in, second leading cause of death nationwide. In 24 to uh, th uh, 35 year olds, and within that, white males, uh, other nationalities, black, Hispanic is comparatively low. Uh, but white males are more likely. And then it is the third leading cause of death in adolescence, uh, let's say around ages 15 to 24. And there the uh, gender spread is a little more uh, balanced. However, again, it is still males who are, are predominant. What, if any, are the signs that we should watch for in case someone we know or love is contemplating this? You check your own reaction. So you don't want to come in panicky. You don't want to come in strong. You don't want to come in lecture. You want to come in with concern because you're looking at another person hurt. Okay. So check your own emotions. Next is, uh, you know, be aware that a person may be coming more withdrawn, uh, or, and sometimes it, it is agitation or anger, but it's out of character and it's building. Where adolescents are concerned, sometimes it's a snap decision uh, that they react quickly and they don't necessarily think things through. Uh, high risk factors, very high risk factors, are youth uh, in the uh, uh, LGBTQT community. It's four times higher than the other people in their age group. And I'm talking about successful suicides and suicides that, that were actually carried out. Um, and those contemplating it within that community is about three times higher. You're looking at someone who's either getting progressively more depressed in a risk category, such as recent military, LGBTQT, more often than not male, changes in moods, loss of jobs, uh, are huge, especially where males are concerned. And you know, the depression and the isolation, a lot of this is brought on by COVID, but it's too early to tell exactly the magnitude of that contribution. And then you, know, you check your own emotions because you are concerned and you are worried, especially a parent, especially a spouse, family member. Check your own emotions first and reach to the person's pain. You seem so sad. What's going on? Or what are you thinking right now? Is there anything going on? And then is the thought of just not waking up like kind of a comfort for you right now? Or do you, you know, do you feel like you've got something worth living for? And, and also then, are you thinking about taking your life? And if the person says yes, let's keep talking about it and just keep the conversation moving forward so that the person can talk and talk and vent. And then it's let's find someone we can go to and I'll go with you. Yeah, that this is such a permanent decision. You want to know 
that there were no other choices before you would ever take such a step. Okay? Someone who is watching this, and I hope they never are in this position to deal mm -hmm. with it, but if they are and they don't know who to call, is there a helpline? Is there somewhere to call sure. for that immediate help? Or do you call the police? Well, they can call 211, okay, which is going to connect them to social service resources very, very fast. 911 will also put them in, you know, with, in touch with someone who, said, who says, I'm struggling right now. I'm thinking about killing myself. You know, they will have resources as well. If a family member sees that, you know, say someone's holed up in a house, and of course you're going to call 911, you're going to get the police involved, and you're going to do whatever you can to save that person's life. Today's news feature is brought to you by Lehigh Valley Hospital, Hazleton. Remember, in an emergency, our emergency room is the safest place to be. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service on Tuesday, a 70% chance of showers and a possible thunderstorm. Cloudy, then gradually becoming mostly sunny, well behind your 67 degrees. On Tuesday night, a 30% chance of showers before 7 p.m., partly cloudy with a low of 44 degrees. Wednesday, sunny with a high near 63 degrees. Wednesday night, partly cloudy with a low around 46 degrees. On Thursday, sunny with a high near 60 degrees. Thursday night, mostly clear with a low around 41 degrees. Friday, sunny with a high near 61 degrees. And Friday night, mostly clear with a low in the 40s. We have a few local football teams on winning streaks and a few looking to get hot after victories in week five. Here's the SSP TV standard speaker scoreboard. North Schuylkill won big at Penn Argyle and the Spartans are off to a 5-0 start this season. Tamaqua was trailing 21-8 in the second half but pulled off a 27-21 victory over Salzburg for their second straight W. Nate Gregoire finished with 153 passing yards and he tossed the game-winning touchdown pass of 50-yarder to Zach Coleman. Coleman had 95 receiving yards and 80 rushing yards. Speaking of comebacks, Hazleton area was down by 15 points in the fourth quarter but came back to win their third straight game. The Cougars forced overtime after Tyler Wolf hit Matthew Gasatis for a touchdown to bring the Cougars within two. Wolf then passed to Ryan Matias to tie the game on a two-point conversion. In overtime, Matthew Bookman capped off a big game with the winning touchdown and then the interception that locked up the victory. Bookman finished with three touchdowns for the Cougars. Shenandoah Valley beat Marion at home. Quarterback Owen Kozar passed for over 250 yards and four touchdowns in the win, while Nick Ryan caught five passes for 142 yards and two touchdowns. For Marion, Matt Martin rushed for 193 yards and a score. Mono area was led by Ben Manley's 209 rushing yards in a win over Minersville. Hazleton area golfer Isabel Sarach finished first in the girls' standings at the Sealands Grove Invitational over the weekend. On the boys' side, the Cougars' Jacob Palermo was second and Connor Mateo placed third. We'll hear from some members of the Hazleton area girls' golf team later in sports. My social media was filled with pictures from the Bloomsburg Fair over the weekend. We talk with the fair's president after this break. As Speed TV News, I'd like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Alexis Gay Hudock of Indiana, no services have been announced. And Elizabeth May Betty Quails, age 89, of Russell Springs, Kentucky. A funeral service will be held on Tuesday at 12 noon at the Bernard Funeral Home. Friends may call on Tuesday from 10 a.m. until 12 noon at the Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries are being brought to you in part by Harmon Funeral Homes and Crematory with two locations in Rockland and in Drums, 570-384-3312 or 570-788-0977. And go to harmonfuneral.com. 